John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. This is Amicat Game Day weekend, so I hope everyone has a chance to get out to their local game store, play some Magic this weekend at some point. But for today, we are going to talk about the current state of the market. So while you're in your game stores this weekend, if you're curious as to what cards might be hot this weekend, what cards might be cold in the world of Standard or Modern or Legacy... We got you covered. We're going to talk about that today. Quickly, before we get started, if you check out the description below, you'll find a couple ways to help support the channel, one of which is our Amazon affiliate store. If you make any purchases via those links that you'll find there, whether it be singles or sealed product or really anything, a small percentage will come back to help support the channel. It really goes a long way. Also, you'll find a link to our Patreon page down there. Another way to support us. We're very close to our next goal, which is actually very exciting. So if you have a chance, check those out. Having said that, let's get into the cards for today. And we'll begin with the five standard cards that have lost value this week. So some of the cards you're going to see on the list this week are cards that spiked maybe about a week ago or so, and they're starting to snap back a little bit, and the hype is starting to settle down around them. So let's take a look and see what we got. Number five, Nissa Stewart of Elements, down a dollar forty-five to twelve sixty. So I've been mentioning this every week. She's been steadily dropping. She has seen a little bit of standard play, but really not enough, especially now that we're out of the pro tour and we've kind of seen where the meta is going. She's not seeing nearly enough play to warrant a $12 price tag, quite honestly. So she's going to continue to drop. If you're thinking of picking her up maybe for Commander or perhaps to Brew in the future, because she does have potential, I think, somewhere down the line, maybe post-rotation, I would wait a few weeks. I think you might be able to pick her up soon for anywhere between $5, $8. I think that's probably more realistic and a price point I'd be happier to pay. Coming in, number four is Relentless Dead, down a dollar fifty-one to nineteen sixty-three. So I mentioned last week that I felt this card had reached its peak. There was a lot of excitement around it leading into the Pro Tour with zombie builds, and of course during the Pro Tour, especially considering a mono black zombie deck did win the whole Pro Tour, a lot of attention on this card. But really, a twenty twenty-five dollar price point for a card like this is really not sustainable. There's just too many copies out there. So as you can imagine, it's already started its decline down. The deck's still very popular at this point and I think will remain popular for a while in the meta but players are just getting their copies and the hype starting to settle down a little bit. Coming in at number three, Sphinx of the Final Word, down $1.52 to $3.99. So again, another one I mentioned last week that should start to fall, and it is. This was a pre-Pro Tour kind of speculative card. Some folks thought that maybe this was going to be a control finisher in a successful build. That didn't really pan out, so this card is going to start creeping back down to where it was prior to that excitement. Coming in at number two, Gideon of the Trials down 285 to 1770. So Gideon's falling a little faster now, and I think that's due to the fact that we didn't see any big showing from him at the Pro Tour. So even though it's still a good card, again, another card that has a lot of potential in the future in standard, maybe again post rotation, great commander card, a card that even some modern brewers have been trying to work something out with. So this card still has all the potential in the world, but until it really puts up something in one of these formats, it's going to continue to slide a little bit. So again, if you're waiting to pick up Gideon, I think you can wait a little bit longer. You'll probably get a better price point within a few weeks. Coming in at number one, Torrential Gearhawk, down 316 to 2427. Now, this is a card that had a little bit of an emotional roller coaster, I think, for people going into the Pro Tour. It was very high going in. A lot of folks thought that the card was going to be one of the finishers for a control deck, maybe the isn't control deck. And it was. The problem was that deck didn't perform as well as a lot of folks thought it would. However, this card kind of got saved because it showed up in the Marvel Works decks, and some of the builds anyway, and it did really well there. So, again, it's a card that there's a lot of copies out there. It can't possibly sustain the price point that it was at. You can't expect this to stay at $25. So it's already going down. It's going to continue to go down a little bit, even though it will continue to see play, too. All right, let's move into the cards that have gained value this week. What you're going to see here are cards that caught on towards the end of the Pro Tour weekend and are still hot and players are kind of scrambling to pick up right now. Coming in at number five is Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, up a dollar sixteen to twenty four ninety five. So Ulamog's still going up a little bit, but what's true about some of the other cards I mentioned is true about this one too. This card, there's just too many copies out there to sustain a twenty five dollar price point. So I think this is probably Ulamog's peak. 
huge hype around this card because it looked great on camera all weekend last weekend and a lot of folks were picking up copies to build their marvel decks basically this is kind of the go-to card no matter what type of marvel deck you're playing because of that, it will still have a nice price point for a while. And don't forget, this card sees a lot of play in other formats too. It's in Legacy Stompy decks, not to mention Modern Tron. So it's a card that at least has some value even after it rotates out of standard for a lot of players. Coming in number four, Dread Wanderer, up $1.30 to 5 dollars Now, of course, this is a key part of both the Mono Black and the Black White Zombie decks, and those decks looked great last weekend. In fact, one of them won the Pro Tour, so as you can imagine, this card's still going up a little bit, although I do think it's reaching its peak now. Coming in at number three, Metallic Mimic, up $1.49 to 6 dollars So not all zombie decks were running this. This is really a component of those Mono Black zombie decks. However... The deck that won the Pro Tour that Jerry Thompson played last weekend played four of these. So as you can imagine, a lot of players decided they were going to pick up some copies. And because of that, you're seeing a nice spike today. Now, the thing to remember again with this card, though, is there's a lot of copies out there. This isn't even a mythic. It's a rare. So again, I think we've seen the peak of this card, too. Coming in at number two, Liliana's Mastery, up $1.54 to $3.99. Now, this card everybody really prepared for in a way as they were building their decks for zombies, again, for both versions of the deck. However, I think it caught some people off guard just how good this card looked on camera last weekend, and because of that, brought some more attention to it, and the deck that won the Pro Tour was running four of these. So if you only were running maybe two or three in your deck, and you're going to tweak after the Pro Tour... Yeah, a lot of players are just going to go ahead and pick up their play sets so they have four in their deck, and that's why you're seeing more of a spike this week. Coming in at number one, Chandra Flamecaller, up 281 to 716. This one's pretty interesting because this did see some play at the Pro Tour, and it looked good when it did show up. It was in some of the versions of Team or Marvel Works, not all, but some of them. However, the real appeal of this card now is it's a great anti-zombie card. And because of that, a lot of players that maybe were running Team or Marvel Works but weren't running this card are going to go ahead and pick it up. And also some players who maybe weren't in Team or Colors Marvel Works, this is good enough incentive to bring them over, perhaps. So this card's going to be hot, I think, not just for this week, but over the next week or two. I think she could continue to climb. All right, let's move on to the top five modern cards that have lost value this week. Modern's kind of in a weird place right now, so you're going to notice when we look at some of the cards that lost value, there is some speculation and at least some thought around the fact that Iconic Masters is coming out in November, and there could be some cards, especially cards that maybe were not reprinted over the course of the last year or two, that maybe could show up there. So I'll point those out when we get to those cards. But coming in at number five is Tarmogoyf from Future Sight, down 263 to $130. Now, the other Tarmogoyfs are a little bit cheaper, but there are some players that are always going to want this original version with the Future Sight card frame and the unique art. So because of that, this card's always going to be worth a little more. It seems to be sitting around the $130 mark pretty comfortably. Coming in at number four is Noble High Arc from Modern Masters 2015. This is down 274 to 6560. Well, here's an example of what I was talking about. Very, very suspicious to me that this card was not in Modern Masters 2017. It was a multicolor focus set. This is a card that desperately needed a modern reprint, but also is a card that's great in legacy and vintage. So, like, it just seemed like it should have been there. However, Maybe it wasn't there for a reason. Maybe we're going to see it in Iconic Masters. And because of that speculation, it's a little soft right now. Players don't want to spend $60, $70 for a card that could be reprinted as a rare in a, albeit limited set, but still it's going to put enough copies out there to maybe drive the price down $20, $30, perhaps even $40. It's definitely something that we'll have to watch as we get closer to the September and those cards are revealed. Coming in at number three, Bloom Tender, down 301 this week to 3099. Now, this card had a big spike a couple months ago when Saffron Olive featured it as a card in one of his brews on MTG Goldfish. Now, when that brew doesn't pan out and starts putting up big results in tournaments, the card price tends to go down a little bit, and this card has gone down a little bit over time. But a couple things are keeping its price point still relatively high. The first one is Commander. This is a great Commander card. Commander player is happy to play this card. The second thing to watch out for this is just simply that it's from Eventide. Cards from that time period of Magic, I'm thinking like Future Sight through Eventide, they had really low print runs. So a lot of times the marketplace just gets dry. And even though there might not be all that many players looking for copies, 
it's just really hard sometimes to find the card in the singles market. So because of that, the price point, I think, is going to stay pretty steady between $20 and $30. Coming in at number two is Life from the Loam, down 305 to 2041. Now, this card saw a nice spike a few weeks back when the Cycle Lands were originally previewed. A lot of folks started trying to brew with this card and Cycle Lands. Fortunately, nothing really came out of it, at least not yet. So this card's starting to creep back down a little bit. And coming in at number one is Cryptic Command from Lorwyn, down $3.37 to $30.18. Great control card for Modern. This card was spiking a little bit about maybe two, three weeks ago at this point, and it is snapping back a little bit. But another card that was maybe a little suspiciously absent from Modern Masters 2017, we saw some other commands. We didn't see the command, Cryptic Command. So there's a good chance, maybe, that it does show up at some point in another product, perhaps Iconic Masters. And because of that, the card's a little bit soft at this point. All right, let's move on to the modern cards that have gained value this week. And even though we're looking at cards that are modern legal, a lot of the drivers for some of these cards are actually from outside the modern format. Coming in at number five, Chalice of the Void, up $1.35 to $67.16. Now, this is a card that's huge in modern, but also huge in vintage and legacy, too. So there's a lot of reasons that this card is continuing to go up. Even though it potentially could see a reprint, maybe in Iconic Masters, at this point, it just doesn't matter. Players that are trying to buy into any of those decks are picking up copies right now. Coming in at number four, Omniscience, up $1.37 to $21.55. Now, this is being driven not from Modern, but from the world of Legacy. There's some big changes right now in the Legacy meta after we saw the banning of Top a few weeks back. So decks like Omnitel, which basically runs this, and Show and Tell... Those decks are appealing to people right now because this card's not super expensive in the world of Legacy, and Show and Tell was recently reprinted in Conspiracy Take the Crown. So if you're going to buy into a deck that is competitive in Legacy and you're trying to limit your funds to a little bit less than many other decks, but it's still very, very expensive, then this could be a way to go for you. But ultimately, I think this deck will definitely put up better results now that Miracles has been weakened. Coming in at number three is Bitter Blossom from Morning Tide, up $1.62 to $32.40. Now imagine that, another card from that period of magic. Now this does see modern play. It's currently in a black-white tokens build that you see occasionally. However, the focus on this card right now is due to the fact there's increased attention on fairy tribal. Now, some of which is in the world of Commander. However, about a month ago or so, the professor from Tolarian Community College did a feature video on modern fairies, and it brought a lot of attention to the deck. It's a deck that's not super expensive. You can throw together a fairy deck that's actually relatively competitive for about 200, maybe $230 or so. So a lot of players are interested in it. Now, I wouldn't call it a tier one deck or anything like that. It's gonna be hard to win a tournament with a deck like this, but it at least can put some competition down on the battlefield. And because of that, you'll notice this isn't the only fairy card that is increasing this week. Coming in at number two, Scythrix, the Blight Dragon, up $1.92 to $17.67. Now, this is another card that sees a little bit of modern play, shows up in some ad nauseum builds. However, again, the price point isn't really being driven this week by modern. More or less, this is coming from the world of Commander. We saw a lot of minus one, minus one matters effects in Amonkhet, and that has captured a lot of Commander players' imaginations. There's a lot of minus one, minus one Commander decks going on right now, and this is a great Commander or just a support card in those decks. Coming in at number one, here's the other fairy. It's Miss Bind Click from Lorwyn, up 325 to 1183. So again, another card from that time period doing well, but this is another card that is really benefiting from the additional focus on fairies that we've seen recently. All right, let's move on to the world of legacy. There's a few interesting things here. For the most part, we're looking at the usual suspects here in the cards that lost value, though. Coming in number five, Candle Opera of Tanos, down ten dollars to four fifty-seven fifty. Number four, Diamond Valley, down twelve oh five to one ninety-three twenty-nine. This card hangs out around the two hundred dollar price point typically. Number three, Jazam Jin, down eighteen dollars to four sixty-three seventy-three. This card usually hangs out around the five hundred dollar price point. Number two, Gauntlet of Might from Unlimited, down twenty-five sixty-two to one seventy-five. This card usually hangs out around two hundred dollars. And coming in at number one, Moat, 
down 26, 58 to 565, all one. This card's had a wild ride this year. There was a buyout that really drove the price up. The cards were introduced back into the market. The price came down. When folks saw the price coming down, they kind of scrambled to get their copies because they were afraid it was going to happen again. So it went back up. <laughs> so it's finally kind of stabilizing and it seems to be landing around this price point around 550 to 570. All right, let's move into the cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number five is Aladdin's Ring from Arabian Nights of 555 to 1140. And I do want to point out this is not a reserve list card. This has actually seen many, many printings. I think it was in every core set from revised through ninth edition or something like that. So there's a lot of cheap copies of the card out there if you're looking for it. But there's a lot of attention on the Arabian Nights set in general, especially if you can find a affordable rare to pick up. There are some collectors that are more than happy to do it, even if it's not a reserve list card. Coming in at number four, Enchantress's Presence of 662 to 1347. Now, this is a card that does see some legacy play, but right now the Enchantress deck is not super hot in legacy. Even after the banning of top, it doesn't seem to be one of those decks that's gaining momentum or anything like that. This is really being driven more by the commander market, and this is a great commander card, especially in some spiky commander decks. Coming in at number three is Howling Mind from Unlimited, up 710 to 6480 this week. And again, another card that's not on the reserve list, has seen multiple printings in many, many sets over the years. You can find cheaper copies, obviously, out there if you go to some other sets. But something that came up in many of the previous videos that a lot of times I get questions about in the comments section is, why do some of these Unlimited cards make these drastic up and downs? A lot of it does have to do with the 9394 format, and basically that's a format that has a few different variants to it, but there's at least one variant of that format that says you can only play cards from Alpha Beta Unlimited, Arabian Nights Antiquities, and Legends. And the cards have to be from those sets, so even if they were reprinted in another set in the future, you have to play with one of those versions of the card. So a lot of times, obviously, if a card's in Alpha Beta Unlimited, the cheapest version being Unlimited, means a lot of people will gravitate towards that card as they try to develop decks in that format. Now, it's not a format that's as big as, say, Modern or even Legacy or anything like that, but because the card pool is really so low for these cards that even a small group of players can really start to affect the singles market quickly by building a 93-94 deck or two, right? So it is something that's actually an interesting aspect when you look at some of these Legacy cards in general, when you see things like this happen. So Howling Mine is just the latest, but I just wanted to kind of bring that up. Now, there are some other variants of 93-94 that do also allow you to play with Revised the Dark and Fallen Empire, and that opens up the game a little bit because a lot of the cards from Alpha Beta Unlimited, you can find cheaper versions in Revise, so that would count for, say, even things like the Dual Lands, but cards like Howling Mine, you can get much cheaper if you wanted to get a revised version. The print run was just much higher. Coming in at number two is one of those Dual Lands from Unlimited, Tundra, up 1116 to 324 this week. And finally, we'll wrap things up with another dual land from Unlimited. It's Badlands, up 2746 to 21354. You know, some of these cheap Unlimited dual lands like Badlands and Scrublands, they've been going up quite a bit over the last few weeks. And I think it's just because, really, if you're in the market to start picking up some of these duels, even the ones that maybe don't see as much play as others, if you can pick these things up for around $200 price point, a lot of collectors are going to be happy to do that. All right, having said that, those are the cards for this week. Now, I do have a video I'm working on for later in the week that's going to be a video talking about some undervalued cards. Uh, that will go out probably early in the week to our gold patrons first, and then later in the week I will post that on YouTube. So check that out, and then of course next Saturday we'll be doing another Market Watch, and in between we'll have all sorts of other content as well. So until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.